it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to day 11 of my 2023 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using Hello Bluebirds, Christmas Eve, and Merry Friends. So I've stamped those images out on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'm going to be coloring to match some pattern paper from the Simple Stories, the Holiday Life 6x8 pad. So I'm going to tear a sheet out to use as my color inspiration and tuck that under my cardstock panel, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I'm starting with Santa's skin. I'm using E00, E11, and E13 for that, putting a nice shadow up under his hat brim and under those big bushy eyebrows, and I also put a nice shadow on the tip of his nose just to make that look a little more red. And then I'm going to blend down with the E11 and the E00. Then I'll bring in R20 and R22 and give him some rosy cheeks. And I also added a touch of that to his nose because it's going to be an outdoor snowy scene. So that will just give him a little bit of color on his face. Then I'm going to use E000 with E40 and E41 for his beard. Just coloring that white, but I didn't want to go with gray tones. I wanted something that was a little bit warmer and creamier. So I'm just adding that E41 wherever I want the deepest shading to go, like up around the edges of his hat and at the bottom of his beard, bottom of his mustache. And I put it on the top of his eyebrows. And then I'm going to blend out with the E41. Still sticking close to the edges though, because I do want to leave plenty of white space so it still reads as white. And then I'm going to use the E000 to kind of soften those shades into that white cardstock. And I'm also going to use these shades for the white parts of my little deer. So I'm starting with that E41 again. I'm going to go around the patch around the eye and then also the inner parts of the ears, the underside of the tail. And then I'm also going to bring some of that color down on the neck, starting with that E41 and just adding a little bit of shading on the side there and then blending out with the E40 and then a little bit of that E000 and I'll blend that into the other colors in just a moment. And then I'm going to use the E40 to add a little shading to the white parts of my candy cane. For the rest of my deer's body, I'm going to use E51, E53, and E55. I wanted to go with some lighter tones today since this is just a little fawn. You can tell from the spots on the hindquarters. So I just wanted to use some lighter shades. So I'm using the E55 for the darkest shadows, adding a little bit of that on the top of the tail. Also on the top of the back and hindquarters because the head is tipped a little bit backwards and we'd be casting a shadow there. I put some shadows on the backs of the legs and then I'm also just adding some shading around the head and on the edges of the ears. And then I'm going to start to blend that out with the E53. I am coloring carefully around those little spots to try to keep them as white as possible, but I will go over those later on to make them even whiter. So if you end up accidentally coloring over them, it's not a big deal, especially if you're using these lighter shades. But once I have that E53 laid in everywhere, I'm going to come in with the E51 and just fill in any space that I want to be brown. I did leave the belly white and I'm just going to take that E51 a little bit into that neck area that I had already shaded with the lighter tones. Next I'm going to bring in some reds. I'm using R24, R29, and R39 to color all the little red parts of Santa's outfit. And he is quite a large image, so I'm going to break him down into sections. So I'm just working on the hat first. I'm using that R39 to lay in a nice shadow up above that hat brim. Since that fabric is folded over and is nice and thick, it would be casting a shadow on the red part of the hat. So I blended that out with the R29 and then added a nice little highlight at the top with that R24. 
Then I'm going to work on the part of his jacket that is above the belt. So I'm carefully going around his beard and trying not to get any red into that white area because red is quite hard to push out. And I just want to have a little bit of a shadow there. So I'm using the very tip of my marker and very light pressure to just add a little bit of that darkest shade in there so it will add a nice bit of contrast and depth. And then I'm gonna blend that out again with the R29. Still making sure to leave some room in there for that R24 so we still get a dynamic look. And I also saved that little part that is on the other side of the lantern um, to do separately because I needed to really focus and see what would be red and what would be white there. So I just was very careful about coloring that in once I figured that out. Then I'm going to move to the area of the jacket that is below the belt. So I'm adding some shading on both sides of his body, both the left and the right. Also up under the belt and his sleeve. And where the fabric is kind of meeting each other up in the center there, I'll also add a little bit of depth there. So um, Nice little bit of highlight in the center down right above the hem. It'll give me that nice warm bright tone with that R24. And then there's also the area under his jacket where his pants are right above his boots. So that would be more shaded because it wouldn't get as much light down there. So I'm not leaving as much room for a highlight, but I still want there to be a little bit so that we have a nice bit of contrast. So just a little touch of that R24 to fill in those little white slivers that remained. And then I also am going to do the red parts of my candy cane. I'm just using the R24 to color those in solid because it's super small. And I also wanted to do the bow on the gift to be red. So I'm putting the R39 down toward the bottom of the ribbon and also where the ribbon is gathered. And then blending out with the R29 and then using the R24 once again for that nice warm highlight. Then I'm going to move on to some warm grays to do the white parts of Santa's outfit. I'm using W00, W1, and W3. So I'm only gonna use a little bit of that W3 because I don't want it to get dark and look dingy. I just wanna have a bit of shading to it. So I started with that and then I'm blending out with the W1 and then the W00 and then I'm gonna leave a lot of that cardstock just plain white and that's gonna make sure that it still reads as white and doesn't look, you know, like it's been packed away for the entire year and is all dusty. <laughs> so I'm adding the same shades on the sleeves of the jacket and then also down at the hem. And once again, I just kind of broke it down into little sections just so I didn't get too overwhelmed since this is such a large image, but it's super fun to color. I just loved coloring this little Santa. I think he's so cute. And um, yeah, I had so much fun coloring him in. I'm gonna move on to some darker grays now. I switched to the tees. The tees have a little bit more of a cooler tone to them, which I think lends it well to kind of shinier things like a belt or boots, things like that. So that's why I switched from the warm grays to the toner grays. They still are a little bit warmer than like the cool grays, so it just ties into those warm grays a little bit better. But I'm using the T7 for the darkest, blending out with the T5, and then using the T3 for a highlight. I'm also gonna color his boots with these shades, so he'll have some nice black boots. Putting most of the shading up under the pants and down the back of the boot, but also in the crease above the toe just to emphasize where that is kind of drawn in. And then again, blending out that T7 with the T5 and making sure to leave a little bit of highlight on the toe where the light would reflect the most for that T3. 
I'm also going to use these shades for the lantern. So I'm going to start with that T7 and carefully fill in the handle of the lantern. And I'm just going to do that solid because it's such a thin little area to color in. So again, using the very tip of that marker and just, you know, only using light pressure so I can get in all of those little areas. I'll also add a little bit of shading on the left hand side and that way the light will be reflecting on the right where it's kind of pointed out toward the center of the scene that I'll be creating. And then just filled in the rest with the T5 and T3. And then I'm also going to color in his mittens with these shades but I wanted the mittens to be a little bit darker, so I'm being more heavy-handed with that T7, using a bit more of that than I did on his boots or his belt, just because they wouldn't probably be the same material. I mean, maybe they would be like leather or faux leather. I'm not sure, but um, I just didn't want them to look exactly the same, especially against the belt, so I did them a little bit darker. Then I use YR23 for the gold part of his buckle and also added a flame into the lantern. And then to blend out that flame and give a little bit of a glow, I'm going to add in Y quadruple zero, Y triple zero, and Y13. I actually didn't end up using the Y quadruple zero, I just used the Y triple as my lightest. Um, but I just kind of worked back and forth, creating a nice little glow there. And then the YR23 started to kind of lose shape. So I went back in and added a bit more of that. And then also a bit more of the Y13. Those two shades were a bit too far apart though. So I decided to add in Y15 to kind of transition from that darkest into the middle and then just kind of went back and forth over those last few colors until I had a look that I wanted. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to add in some greens to tie in the greens in that pattern paper. I'm using G40, G43, and G46. I'll do the bow that is tied around the little fawn's neck using that G46 towards the back of the head and then also where the fabric is gathered into the knot and then blending out with the G43 and then the G40 for the highlight and I'll also do the wrap on the gift with those same shades just putting the darkest down at the bottom and the highlight at the top. I used E47 to color in the little fawn's hooves. I just did them solid since it was such a small little area and then I used R00 and R11 to add a little rosy cheek and some color to the inside of the ears. And then to brighten up those white spots on the little fawn's hindquarters, I'm going to color them in with a white Sakura Jelly Roll pen. And I also added a touch of that to the edge of his tail, the white part. Then I took a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and got that going off to the side and I'll go over the eye of my deer and the eyes of my Santa to make those nice and bright and shiny and then trim these images out with their matching dyes. So next I'm going to go to my paper pad once again, The Simple Stories, The Holiday Life and choose a couple more prints that I want to use in combination with that candy cane print. So I have this pale snowflake on like a creamy background. I also have this green, red, and white stripe that always reminds me of like a, a linen kitchen cloth, like a dish towel. And then I wanted some red in there, so I went with this red damask. And so the three prints that I'll be using together on the card are the three on the left, and then that snowflake print is gonna be my focal panel. So the first three prints I trimmed down with my paper trimmer. The snowflake print I trimmed down with the Hello Bluebird nesting oval dies. And then I also did a piece of white cardstock and trimmed that down with one of the Hello Bluebird Hill and Dale dies to create a little snowdrift. 
And then I cut down some Lawn Fawn Gold Metallic cardstock using the next size up of that nesting oval. So I'm going to adhere these together. I also did just a plain white oval that's the same size as the snowflake print just to add behind the pattern paper to give it a little bit more stability because I want to pop it up on my card front. And so I'm just going to add some liquid glue to the back of the snowflake print and glue that to the white piece. Like I said, that's just going to make it a bit more sturdy. And then I'll take the white snowdrift and I will glue that down at the bottom of the snowflake print, just making sure that lines up nicely. And then I'm going to pop that in my Misty so I can stamp my sentiment on the bottom. The sentiment that I'm using is from the Merry Friends and I'm stamping that down in VersaFine Onyx Black ink. It is kind of a fine little font, so I wanted to make sure it would be nice and bold and very legible. So I'm doing the one that says, Your Friendship Warms My Heart. And then I'll set that aside to dry and pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using Lawn Fawn Speckled Eggshell Cardstock and Freshly Cut Grass ink. And this time the sentiment and the deer and the snowflakes are all from the Christmas Eve stamp set. And it says, for my dear friend at Christmas. I think that's super cute. And I love that little fawn that I stamped on the inside. That one might be my favorite from the whole set. So now I'm ready to start assembling. I'm going to take the candy cane print and glue that to cover my entire card front. So it is a standard A2 size card, four and a quarter tall by five and a half wide. So I cut this down to fit exactly. So I'm just gonna pinch those corners together to make sure it's lined up straight. And then I'm gonna layer these two prints. I was kind of just deciding whether I wanted the stripe to be in the back or the red to be in the back of the layers. I decided to do the stripe next, so I'm going to add that running vertically from the top to the bottom. And then I'll have the red damask print, or damask print, running horizontally in the center right over top of the striped print. Just making sure that that is on there straight before I press that down into place because that glue dries very quickly. And then I'm going to glue my focal panel to that gold oval. So it just adds a little bit of a frame to that. And again, I just want to make sure it's on there straight before that glue dries permanently. So I'm just adjusting that. And then once I'm happy with how that's looking, I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of it. And then I can peel off those release papers and I'll center that on my card front going to make sure that it's on there with the same amount of room at the top and bottom and the left and the right before I press that down into place. Then I can bring in my images and I'm going to lay out the Santa and the little fawn to kind of figure out the spacing before I add my liquid glue. Once I'm happy with where they are right above that sentiment, I can start to adhere them down. Just making sure that they are accenting that sentiment but not covering up any of the words. And then I'm going to add the little deer on the right hand side. And then I've got those two little tiny accessory images that are going to take up some of that room down in the center because just looked a little bit blank there. So I'm going to put the gift closer to Santa just to pull some of that green over toward that side of the card. And then I'll have the little candy cane kind of overlapping the gift at a bit of an angle. I decided there was a bit too much empty space at the top of that scene. So I'm going to die cut a few little things from some Lawn Fawn cardstock. I'm using Noble Fur for the holly leaves, Barn Red for the berries, and the Craft for the berry stems using the Hello Bluebird Candy Cane Lane dies. And then I wanted to add a bit of color to these to make them more dynamic. So I'm going to use my Copics to just add a bit of shading. 
I'm using E44 for the berry stems and also a little bit on the berry part where it's going to show through the little holes on the red ones. And then for the holly leaves, I'm going to start with G85. Just add a little bit of that down on one end. And then I'll blend that out with the G46, which is the darkest green that I had used in my Copic coloring. And then I also used a little bit of G43. And that's going to dry back a bit more smoothly. It's just looking a bit wet there, so it's not going to be quite so dark at the tips once that dries. And then for the berries, I'm using R39 to add a little bit of shading just down at the end away from the little hole. And then I blended that out with some R29. So just added a little bit of that. And then once I have that done, I'm going to adhere the little berries on top of the berry stem. So I'm just adding a bit of liquid glue there that will be away from that little hole because I don't want the glue seeping through the openings. And then I can pick up the berry that goes in the right spot and just adhere that down right over top of the stem. And then I can bring these to my card front. And I'm just going to do a little arrangement at the top of the scene. So I was kind of laying it out first and figuring out where I wanted things to go. Um, but basically I just wanted the berries to be coming out and then the leaves kind of clustered behind them. And then once I was ready to commit, I'm just going to start with the berry stem. So I added a little bit of liquid glue behind the berries and then also on that narrow little stem. This Barely Art Precision Craft Glue is great for that because it really gets behind all those tiny little places. And then I wanted to make sure not to cover the little fawn's ear, so I'm making sure that that berry just doesn't overlap that. And then the top berry needed a little piece of foam tape to help support that because it was going to hang over the edge of the oval. So I just added that and then I started to glue down my leaves, kind of overlapping that. I knew that this first leaf was also going to need a little bit of foam tape to help support one edge that would be hanging over the frame as well. And then I used a little bit of liquid glue for the part that would be overlapping. I just wanted to make sure that everything fit within the frame of the card because I want it to be able to be sent in the mail and so it needs to fit inside a standard size envelope. So I'm just kind of peeling off some of those berries again because I wanted to tuck one of these leaves back behind them and then I can push those berries back down into place. And then I just have that last holly leaf that I'm going to add closest to Santa kind of tipping down a bit into the scene. And then I added a bit more liquid glue behind that one berry that I had to peel up. And then of course I wanted to add a bit of glitter to the scene. So I'm taking my favorite Stardust Stickles and adding a little bit to the bow that is tied around the little reindeer's neck. I'll also add it to the bow on the gift. And if I get a little bit that goes outside of the lines, I just use my fingernail to kind of push it back over the black line. <laughs> it's just easy to do when it's wet. I added it to the white parts of Santa's little outfit. So the little pom-pom on his hat and all of the little brims and um, the cuffs of his jacket and the hem as well. And then I also added a little bit into the lantern. And then I decided to also add some to the berries and the holly leaves just to make them look a little bit frosted. So I added a little bit of that just to the bottom edge of each of those things just to keep it consistent. And that is going to finish off this card. So I will lift that up to the camera so you can see all of that sparkle both with the stickles and the gold metallic cardstock frame. And then there is another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I love to hear from you. 
subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell if you want to be alerted whenever I post a new video. Check the description box down below if you want links to all of the products that I used today, and I will also add in day 11 of the previous two years of holiday card series on screen here, so if you'd like to keep on watching, you can click on either one. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I really hope that you had a good one, and I will see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.